Hey guys, welcome to my first video on the course Mechanical Control Systems. In this video, I will talk about linear spring and viscous dampers which is mainly used in linear mechanical systems. I organize this course into several basic videos to help you build from basics and then progress step by step. Let's begin. Here you can see the schematic of the linear spring. This spring has two ends, one and two. Let's assume that one end is fixed. Initially, I am not applying any force on end 2 of the spring so the displacement of the end 2 of the spring is zero. This initial configuration corresponds to point A on the force versus displacement diagram. Now when I apply a force F, the spring will have an extension by an amount X. This corresponds to point B in the force versus displacement diagram. In the force versus displacement diagram, if I draw a straight line from point A to point B, I will obtain a straight line and the slope of this straight line will give us the spring stiffness K. Therefore, force is equal to stiffness times displacement or F is equal to Kx. Now, when the spring is compressed, or extended by an amount, X from the initial length, the elastic potential energy, of the spring changes. Elastic potential energy is given by area under the force versus displacement diagram. We know area of a right angled triangle is, half times, base, times, height. In this case, the base is the displacement value, x, and height is the applied force, f. Which gives us potential energy as, half f times x. We know that, f is equal to kx. Replacing this in potential energy equation we obtain, elastic potential energy of the spring is half time k time x squared. Now, I will talk about dampers or dash pot. If in spring, the force is proportional to displacement, in the dampers, the force is proportional to velocity or rate of change of displacement. When a force is applied on the damper, the piston will try to force the fluid through small openings which provides viscous resistance to the motion of the fluid. Analogous to stiffness in case of spring, the dampers will have damping coefficient. So in the force versus velocity or x dot diagram, we will obtain a straight line with slope c. In this case, the damping energy is also obtained analogous to the elastic potential energy, that is half times c times x dot squared. In both cases energy is positive. These two energy equations are very important, when you want to obtain equation of motion of mechanical systems. Now we will see how the extension of the spring changes in different configuration. Here you can see the spring with displacement of end 1 represented as U1 and displacement of end 2 represented as U2 and stiffness K. Case 1, if U1 and U2 are equal. There is no extension or compression of the spring and the spring will have rigid body displacement by an amount of U1 or U2. Case 2, if U1 is greater than U2 which means that there is a compression of the spring and elastic potential energy is given by half times k times u2 minus u1 the whole squared. Case 3, if u2 is greater than u1. There is an extension of the spring and elastic potential energy is given by half times k times u2 minus u1 the whole squared. For case 2 and 3 elastic potential energy will be the same. Case 4, if u1 is 0. Then there is an extension of the spring and elastic potential energy is given by half times k times u2 squared. In this slide, the same situation is encountered by dampers and their corresponding damping energy is recorded. This will be helpful when you write the equation of motion of complex mechanical systems, where both ends of spring and dampers are moving. So, in this video you have learned about spring and dampers and how to calculate their energies. In next video, I will introduce you to inertial elements that is moving mass, and rotating disc, and also, gravitational potential energy.